Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you, Mark Simone? Very good. I love these uh, moments in history. We get one every few years, usually around an election where Democrats have to pretend they love the military and they get some uh, somebody in uniform <laughs> to badmouth a Republican and suddenly you can't attack uh, anybody in a uniform and they pretend they're pro-military all of a sudden. Yes, though so not pro-military when they're killing al-Baghdadi, who was a brave hero and an austere Islamic scholar. (laughs) I get sick of of, um, all of this, you know, obsession with wither the Middle East when we have a complete disaster on our southern border and, you know, piles of corpses 60 miles from Arizona, um, Mexican-run meth labs outside of schools in Atlanta. Um, The foreign policy thing is, is a total scam. Yet and still, I have never seen um, the media try so desperately with the killing of al-Baghdadi this weekend um, to, find, to find the dark cloud behind the silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> well, you saw that uh, fake uh, CNN. Uh, it was a screenshot of CNN where the headline is, Trump kills unarmed father of three. <laughs> <laughs> Not far off from the Washington Post actual headline, um, but no, you're right. This this Colonel Vindman is is my new obsession, returning to me to my long standing um, um, suggestion uh, that immigrants wait three generations to start bossing us around. Um, you know, we have the most successful, prosperous, glistening country on earth in the history of the world um just come for a few gener- generations keep your gaps shut observe learn see how it's done um i mean i mean this not only for for vinsman we'll get to him in a moment but you know for reed zakaria and ilhan omar and i actually turn on msnbc any hour of any day and you'll see people who just arrived from um as as the president has wisely pointed out, from utterly failed countries, often with their own participation failed, um, demanding that we that we change things all around. Um, yeah, okay, well, you know, welcome to our country. <laughs> Observe, this is a successful country. Um, there is a reason we have we have in the Constitution that you have to be born here to be president, which brings me right back to Colonel Vinsman, who apparently mistook his citizenship ceremony for for an inauguration to president of the United States. What's so enraging about this is it's such a pro forma, unnecessary call to begin with. Um, and, and this is all over his policy disagreement, because we are not sending um, foreign policy money fast enough. It's not flowing smoothly to the country of his birth. Yeah, well, and uh, more than that, Vindman works in the White House as an aide. Nobody asked him for his judgment on how to run foreign policy. No, again, as I recall, I, I was reading the newspapers. I may have missed it, but I do not think he, Alexander Vindman was elected president. No. <laughs> uh, and apparently, uh, Schiff and Brennan ordered him to wear full dress uniform to this fake hearing. Uh, he showed up full dress uniform at the Capitol. They thought it was Halloween. They handed him candy. They didn't know what why he was wearing. It. <laughs> oh, I can tell you why he was wearing the uniform. Well, yeah. Um, Look at him. Without the uniform on, you'd think, <laughs> oh, you must work for Representative Schiff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Democrats uh, screaming last night, you cannot, and you must hang on his every word. You can't question him. He's a military veteran. He's got medals. But what, where was that rule for General Flynn or Ollie North? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Yes, that that comes al- um, along with, um, what is it? Dissent is patriotic whenever a president is in office. Um, it's it's treasonable whenever a Democrat is in office. Um, no, this Vindman character, I, I mean, this really is crazy that he was covering Ukraine policy vis-a-vis Russia um, on the National Security Council. I, I mean, we're importing uh, all sorts of people with all sorts of ancient rivalries and hatreds. As you know, Ukrainians absolutely detest the Russians because of Stalin. Um, oh, when, when, when Trump pulled the troops out of the Kurdish area of Syria, 
And by the way, you know, this really ticks me off, too. He finally does something I like. And it turns out none of them are coming home. They're just moving to different parts of the Middle East that we're going to police. Oh, fantastic. When are you going to get some of those troops down to America's southern border? Um, in any event, when they're discussing this on TV, I forget who the congressman was. I could probably find it on Nexus. Um, but I don't know if he was himself Kurdish, but he starts talking about, well, I have a lot of Kurds in my district, and they're very concerned about this. That, that's fantastic. That's terrific. So we're just importing all of these ancient parochial rivalries, um, totally contrary to the beauty of America being far away from Europe, far away from these countries with lots of big problems. No, we're just going to be a happy, successful little country. Oh, no, Teddy Kennedy said, I can stop that. Well, uh, so a lot of people say Pelosi, Schiff, uh, and company, they've gone too far now. They can't stop. They're going to have to actually at some point make this into an actual impeachment. Do you think that's the case? Well, from the, the video yesterday, it looks like Pelosi is not anxious to do so. No. Um, <laughs> um, as, as I wrote in, in my column right after that transcript of the Ukrainian phone call came out, the transcript I wanted to see of, was of Nancy Pelosi cursing out her aide. <laughs> Who thought we should demand the transcript of this phone call? <laughs> crap, crap, crap. We're totally screwed. She already called for the impeachment inquiry before they saw the phone call, which is Trump said. There's nothing the matter with the phone call. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I think I may have mentioned this before. It, it, it came, um, a light bulb popped on over my head. The reason I really like the impeachment inquiry, and I think it may <laughs> help Trump's reelection, is, as I've said to you before, I've, I've been feeling like if we're ever going to get anything, it's between now and the next election, a second term for Trump. If he gets one, he's not going to do anything for his voters since he's done so little during the first term. Um, though he's, you know, aces, A++ on maligning the media. Love him for that. Um, the wall, the deporting the dreamers, the deporting illegals. Uh, don't forget the economy, better, better. jobs, killing two ISIS in four days. Those good things. Yeah. Absolutely don't care about the ISIS leader. I won't say it was a bad thing oh, you, right. you did or tout him as a hero, but I'd be much more interested if he would kill the leader of some Mexican drug cartel. Okay, but the good thing about impeachment is it reminds us that the Democrats and the media are absolutely insane over Trump. Um, they just want this monster out of their sight. They will never stop trying to impeach him. And, you know, that's, that's a different way to hold his feet to the fire and get him to keep his promises in a second term. He's not going to want to be impeached. He will need his base for that. All right, I hate to say we're out of time, but everybody, if you haven't gotten the book, uh, Ann Coulter's latest book, I think it's her best book, Resistance is Futile. Go order it, Amazon or AnnCoulter.com. Uh, and the new column comes out tonight? Yes, it does. Actually, early, since it's on Vinsman. Oh, okay. So look for that on Twitter or AnnCoulter.com. Get her new column and uh, get the book. And Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. Right, take care.